Today we're going to start by talking about best response strategies. We're going to start, as we have been for a long time, we're going to start with uh, a finite game G. X will represent the set of pure strategies for player one. That will be some finite number. We'll call it M. Y will represent the set of pure strategies for player two. Say there are N of them. And A, of course, will tell us uh, the return if player one plays a particular strategy from X and player two plays a particular strategy from Y. We represent that as we've done before with an M by N matrix where the entry always represents a payoff from player two uh, to player one. Now, instead of sticking with pure strategies, the set of which is X for player one and Y for player two, we'll talk about mixed strategies. So think of X star as the set of all mixed strategies. And again, this notation has been a bit inconsistent in this book. We're going to let P here be a column vector. P1, P2 through PM, representing uh, for player one, picking the first of the M strategies with probability P1, the second with probability P2, up to the Mth with probability P sub M. And so among all the different probability vectors P in X star, those represent all the different mixed strategies. And remember when I say probability vectors, all the P1, P2 through PM have to be greater than or equal to zero, and they have to sum up to exactly one to be called a probability vector. And similarly for Q, Q will represent a probability vector uh, for the N choices for player two. So Y star will consist of all of these probability vectors that look like Q1, Q2, up to Q sub N. Again, all the Qs have to be greater than or equal to zero, and they have to sum up the numbers in, uh, in, the, in the entries of the column vector have to sum up to one. So, Let's start to look at this game again from player two's perspective. And now let me say right away, we're talking about ge a general finite game here. We're not going to assume, make any assumptions in this talk about whether there exist uh, optimal strategies with positive entries. In other words, we don't care if it's an all strategies, active game or not. Uh, just an arbitrary finite game here. And I'll ask the question, Suppose player two chooses some fixed big strategy Q. Player two is going to play that. And let's say player two announces it, or for some reason player one knows what that's going to be. So player one knows what player two is going to do. It'll be use the, use the mixed strategy Q. Well, then what's the best thing for player one to do? Well, player one can compute that easily. Player one can just ask, what is my expected return? for each of my choices. And here we're talking for player one about at first starting with just the pure strategies. I have M pure strategy choices, the different things in X. Which one's best? Well, what is the expected return if I pl play strategy one? It will be A11 times Q1 plus A12 times Q2 plus A13 times Q3 all the way up to A1N times QN. What's the expected return if I play strategy two, meaning row two here. That'll be A21 times Q1 plus A22 times Q2, etc., up to A2N times QN. In general, one can write this as the expected return uh, if player one return plays row I, the average payoff or expected return. And remember, these always represent returns that go to player one from player two. Uh, that expected return will be exactly the sum, j equals 110, of a, i, j, q, j. That's exactly what we've been talking about, what will happen in row i. So the i appears there. We're summing over all the columns, j equals 1 to n. And we can see that very easily as what we'd get if we just multiply this matrix A by the column vector q and look what's in position i. I'll just write that here temporarily. Imagine we take A, we multiply it by Q, which is Q1, Q2, up to Q sub N. And when you multiply, remember, you take the first row dot product with that column. You'll So in the first entry, you'll get A11, Q1, plus all the way up to A1N, QN. And that'll go all the way down to 
a m1 q1 plus up to a m n q n so this product a times q gives us this vector and the thing in row i will be exactly this expected return if player one plays row i we can make the exact same sort of analysis let's say player one is choose uses some mixed strategy p in player one's mixed strategy space x star and player two says okay knowing that player one is going to play p what would my best response be well player two will want to compute what is my return for each of the different choices I have, which is now each different column I might play. And we'll see that the average payoff or the average, the expected return playing column J will be exactly this sum that will start. Let me put in column J here, A1J, A2J, all the way to ANJ, AMJ. It'll be exactly A1J times the probability Get rid of all this stuff now times the probability p1 say player one is playing row one with probability p1 so it'll be a1j times p1 plus a2j times p2 plus a3j times p3 all the way up to a n j times p sub uh, a m j times p sub m and that'll be exactly this sum from i equals 1 to m of p sub i a i j and one can see that that will be again the same as if we do this product let me kind of erase this we look at this product that looks like p1 p2 up to pm we multiply that row matrix this is now the transpose of the column vector p we multiply this row vector p1 through pm by this matrix and the thing that's in column j when we multiply this row vector by column j which will be the jth entry of this product that's what we mean here p transpose times a that's what we have here look at the jth entry and that will be exactly this quantity the expected return so let's go back and ask what are we trying to do Going back to the beginning here, if player two announces a strategy Q in advance and player one knows this, player one will want to look at the expected returns with the different options, row one through row M. This is the expected return with row I and say, I want this to be the best for me. I want to pick the biggest one. Looking at things the other way, if player one uses a particular strategy P, a mixed strategy, and player two knows this in advance, player two will compute the expected returns and say, I want this to be the best for me, which for player two means I want this to be the smallest number. What is the expected payout if we put these together, if player one plays mixed strategy P and player two plays mixed strategy Q? Well, we computed this once about a week ago and we saw that that expected payout can be given by this double sum over all the possible i's from 1 to m and all the possible j's from 1 to n of pi times aij times qj, which we can also write as p transpose aq. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I put back in what a is, the matrix a, it's a11, a12 through a1n, We go all the way up to AM1, AM2 through AMN. That's our payout matrix. We take each entry, for example, A3, 4, so somewhere here in the middle. And we ask, what's the probability using player one's strategy P and player two's strategy Q? What's the probability that will end up in this 3, 2 position? That would be exactly p sub 3 times q sub 4, and we multiply it by that the payout at that position, a3, 4. That's exactly what we're doing here on the left side, is we're saying for every position in the entire matrix, we multiply the value at that position, the number in that entry, 
times the probability p sub i q sub j that we end up in exactly that position when player one plays p and player two plays q. And this quantity can be computed exactly as p transpose a q. In other words, you take this row vector p1, p2 through pm, that's p transpose, you multiply it by this matrix and then you, and you multiply by q, which is q1, q2 through q sub n. Now, in all of this, I'm going to go back and repeat uh, kind of the key thing that we've already said. Player two uses a strategy. Player one wants to maximize player one's return, given that knowledge that player two is using strategy Q. We've already talked about that. What, is it, what will that return be if player one maximizes it? Well, there are M choices for player one. Player one gets to pick one of the pure strategies uh, in X. Player one could, of course, use a mixed strategy, but if we look at these different possibilities, the different components of the matrix A times Q, those will tell you the different returns for player one using the different pure strategies. The best thing for player one certainly can be achieved by playing the best pure strategy. Now, of course, if two of these are the same, one could play easily a mixed strategy involving those two, or if seven of them are the same, one could play a mixed strategy involving all seven of them. But in general, one can achieve that just by picking the best row, the one that has the maximum value of this quantity for i equals one all the way up to m. So we're going to take this quantity and we're going to say, pick the i that makes it biggest, and that biggest value is that best return that player one can guarantee <clears throat> that uh, player one can achieve if player two has already announced I'm playing strategy Q. And remember, since this summation we already uh, saw was exactly, I'm sorry, let me start that again. Uh, player one can guarantee this maximum of the returns for the different rows. Player one picks the row that makes that biggest. This is the return player one can, can achieve if player two has announced strategy Q. Now that can be achieved with a pure strategy, but I claim that's also the same as the maximum for any mixed strategy that one can get if you just look at this quantity P transpose AQ. P transpose AQ, remember, is exactly that expected payout if player one plays a mixed strategy P and player two plays a mixed strategy Q. Well, assuming Q is fixed, that's what player two is gonna do. We can just look at this expected payout here and say, pick a mixed strategy P that makes this biggest. That will again be the best that player one can achieve if player one already knows that player two is playing that mixed strategy Q. And because these are both the best that player one can achieve, given that player two plays mixed strategy Q, these will have to be equal. We can look at the exact same argument the other way around. If player one is determined to use mixed st strategy P and say player two knows it, player two would want to maximize, I'm sorry, maximize, uh, not maximize, but do the best possible, pick the best poss possible a pure strategy from Y, the player two set of pure strategies. In other words, pick the best column. And best for player two means get the minimum value. So player two wants to minimize this quantity, which is the expected return playing column J. And this, we've already determined that uh, this expected return playing column J is exactly the Jth entry in P transpose A. And just as before, this best outcome for player two, which is the minimum value of this particular sum. That will be the best thing player two can achieve, meaning the smallest value player two can achieve, given that player one is determined to play mixed strategy P. And I think this is actually wrong. This should be not AIJQJ. This should be the sum from i equals 1 to m. I wrote the wrong sum there. This should be a p i a i j. This will now be the best strategy player 2 can achieve if player 1 is determined to play mixed strategy p. And just as before, 
this quantity here, P transpose A Q, is the expected return if player one is determined to play P and player two chooses to play strategy, mixed strategy Q. And if we minimize that over all the possible mixed strategies, again, this will be the best player two can do, meaning the smallest value player two can force if player one is determined to play P.